Uh, you had heart surgery fairly recently. It was this last summer? It was May. It's been 10 months. So, um, Talk a little bit about um, how long it's been since your heart surgery, what kind of went into that, and what your recovery process looked like uh, to get you back up to par. Because um, I understand today, I believe you're not limited. Uh, at least your doctor hasn't limited you. Um, at least him, persuaded you, and I'm sure yeah. he. Ten pounds I'm, the first month was. Uh, I'm, a lot I'm to swallow. But yeah, yeah. Did it. So, what was the timeline of that um, heart surgery? Kind of what exactly was it, and what did the recovery process uh, look like? Well, I was diagnosed about three years ago now, uh, just for routine physical. I was asymptomatic and went into the doctor, and she says you have a heart murmur. I'm going to give you an echocardiogram scheduled form. And that digital technology revealed that I had a, a bad mitral valve. You know, and it wasn't closing flush. It was like this. So the blood was spilling over that leakage. You know. The mitral valve is just um, one of the things in your heart that basically helps to stop backflow. It helps to, to keep the blood going where it's supposed to be, right. essentially. Right. So that... That overflow was causing a problem in the long term. And because my heart was so strong and healthy, I didn't detect any weakness or fatigue. And they were concerned, like, why aren't you feeling anything? I, said, I just don't. I said, well, your heart's like double pumping to clear that blood. Would you look at me? No. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't feel anything. So he says, we're going to have to address that. He says, while you're young and healthy, you know, you've got to get that done. And it took me about a year and a half to really come to terms that, uh, I'm human, and this is something that I have to address, otherwise there is no long term. So I did it. It took me a year and a half to make the decision, um, and it was genetic by default. Uh, both my grandfathers um, had the mitral valve prolapse that I had, and one was too afraid to get the surgery. He passed away at 76. The other one, was heart was too weak. He was 80. He still lived five more years, but he passed 85. But um, so neither one of them had the surgery. So I was a little apprehensive going into it. But um, the doctor was University of Iowa and uh, did a good job. And my recovery, I think uh, I was walking day one. And when they released me day five, um, I think I walked 600 yards. And by two weeks, I was doing a five minute plank. What were you doing before this? That would give them some perspective. So 600 yard walk, um, think about a football field that's uh, 100 yards. So right. basically a football field down and back. Um, that was right after the surgery. Um, what did your workouts look before this? I was pretty much normal workouts. Um, What's a normal workout? Normal workout I understand okay. a lot of the people I work with, a uh, normal workout for them is standing up to go to the uh, uh, fridge to get some food. So um, normal workout for, uh, for me. Yeah. Kettlebell Ken. It was, um, I use the kettlebells twice a week. So it maybe be like 200 swings with um, 70 or 80 pounds, two hand swings or a uh, hundred snatches with the 60 pound kettlebell, you know, with one hand. Um, swimming uh, half a mile, biking 20, 30 miles. Um, I run now, but only on the treadmill, half mile or a mile. But uh, just a variety of different disciplines to stay active, you know, but, you know, different endeavors. Yeah, yeah. So pretty high intensity, though, yeah. before high intensity stuff before your 70, 80% heart rate, you know, mm -hmm. max. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So that, um, that's gotta be quite a transition for you then from like needing to put on the, and I'm sure after the surgery, you might not have even, maybe you felt like you couldn't do it, but I'm sure like mentally you were like, I'm ready. Like I could go do it, but, um, yeah, I'm sure that was a hard, was stronger than the body. Yeah. I was like, I just wanted to get back into it. Mm -hmm. But uh, they says the doctor says you got to take it slow. You know it's fragile. You know they had to stitch that that valve ring in there. And uh, so yeah, the first month was a ten pound weight limit. Second month was twenty twenty five. By the third month, I think I was doing thirty five and forty. Fifth month was fifty sixty pounds, and I'd say after six seven months, I'm about ninety percent strength wise to where I was at. But uh, I 
I feel good. I feel no residual effects, no pain. And they went in minimally invasive through the side. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to strip me open. That's good. That's good. And um, yeah, I could only imagine how I would feel in that situation. I actually, um, I didn't have back surgery, but I, I had some weird sciatica at one point in my life. So pain rating down my leg. And I went to the doctor for it and there was like a very, they took an x-ray of my back. And um, this brings a whole nother tangent of um, whether you should get x-ray or MRI if there's pain, because sometimes um, it'll show something that might not even be causing it at all, but that's what the blame is put on. So I think that's what happened at this point. I went to the doctor and there was a very tiny um, disc slippage is like spondylothesis. And I was in a back brace for like three months during the summer and I couldn't do anything but walk. Um, so, yeah, it's you know, humbling. <laughs> yeah. And it really makes you appreciate the ability to like move and stuff, but I'm sure we probably had very similar experiences, um, how we felt physically right. before so it's and starting after. starting over from that ground zero. You know, you really have to just understand where you're at and you have to look at every day as progress. And that's the best way to approach it. I mean, you can't get lost and like, oh, I used to be able to do this and I can't do it. But you just, to me, it just keeps me motivated by thinking about making progress every day. Well, like I, I, I think that would be a much better way for people to reframe it because I feel like, you know, depression and anxiety often comes from not having a sense of purpose. So even though it seems like it might suck right now, it, it does suck to be honest, but looking at it as like, there's a lot that I can learn from this and using that as kind of like a springboard of how am I going to work out in my current abilities? How am I going to make these changes? I think that makes it a little bit more fun and engaging versus like I'm unfit or I just had a right. knee you surgery. Can't, you can't let it depress you. you know. Yeah, but you can, I mean, and people do. And, those are the people who don't don't live much longer 